Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello and welcome to The Surge, a new action RPG by Deck 13 Interactive, the creators of Lords of the Fallen, and this is an action RPG that is quite Souls-like in nature, but if you want any more information on exactly what to expect from the game, I do have a full review, my very first review, and I'll go ahead and link that in the description below as well as probably put a card here somewhere in the top corner, so if you want to check it out, feel free, but needless to say, I am very much enjoying this game i really am now there are some parts that are, are questionable there are some enemies that can hit you or kill you rather in one maybe two hits even with some really good gear on but we're gonna work through that as we go so what is this series gonna be well it's going to be kind of like my dragon's dogma series it'll be a let's play walkthrough hybrid it is going to be live commentary which this is right now but i'm going to do my best to research beforehand and to understand as much of the game as I can before I present to you each area. All right, I'm going to be starting a brand new character. I'm going to be playing around with different builds. Most of the time that I've been playing the surge, I've spent with either one hand or the twin raid, which is kind of like dual wielding. But I'm going to try and stretch myself and use the heavy weapons and the tw uh, the single rigged as well as some of the others like the staff. But we will see as we go. So, I'm going to jump right into it. There is an opening cutscene. I'm going to let you enjoy that, and I'll see you on the other side. The ancient Greeks once said, A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. We tend to forget about this, tend to be careless, but we have to rise to the task together. It's up to all of us to sow those seeds, and it's up to us to nurture them towards growth. Creo is not just another company. With Project Resolve, we are building the path to the future. Follow us into a new era, a utopia for all mankind. With every launch, we're healing our planet, restoring its natural shield. A return to the green world we remember, where our children can once more play in the sun. Resolve is not only revitalizing the Earth, but its people, too. We've all dreamed of it, and now Creo is making it a reality. Together, we're strong. Together, we can make a change. Unleash your potential with us. Welcome. I know you're glad to be here. I am, and I'm glad to see you. Creo, you know who we are, or at least you think you do. Everywhere you turn, we're there, whether you see us or not. Maybe it's time to take a closer look. Creo is one of the world's largest manufacturers of consumer and industrial products, but we're so much more, and that's why you're here. At Creo, we're always reaching for the stars. We've always had our eyes on the big picture. From our work on third world, valuable minds, and city education initiative, and of course, programs like Project Resolve that benefit us all. Creo not only wants to change the world, with Project Resolve, we aim to save it. There's no divide here. At Creo, we're all in this together. So welcome to your new life as part of the Creo family. So that was Don Hackett. He seems to be Creo's probably public relations spokesperson. We're going to see him a lot on TVs throughout the facility as we go. And he's always talking to the employees and trying to motivate them and get them excited about the company they now work for. Now, I think this is one of the best setups for a game I've seen in a while. We get a short but sweet cutscene that gives us an idea of what's happened to the world we're about to step foot in. But we also get introduced to the player character. Now, a lot of you have commented on there's the fact that there's no character customization, and, and that's true. 
you do play as a singular character who already has a name and a backstory, but I think that there's some reasons for that. I think that they want to help direct the narrative instead of the player creating their own story, which works in some games and doesn't work in others. Now in this game, the big first reveal is that we're in a wheelchair. We're in a wheelchair, and I think that this is perfect for a number of reasons. Number one, individuals in wheelchairs are heavily underrepresented in the video game world. Now, there have been a couple of side characters who are in wheelchairs. I think, wasn't the pilot in Mass Effect actually handicapped? I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. But as far as characters you actually control, I truly can't think of any. Now, we're not actually going to be in the wheelchair for long, but that's okay because we do know that Warren is a paraplegic. We know that he cannot walk. We don't know for how long he hasn't been able to walk, but we do know that, at least currently, his legs are not functioning. Also, I do find this a little silly. Oh, there we go. Hey, Warren, you let go. I didn't know he did that. Oh, that's fun. Normally, if you actually try and go down the ramp, but... Oh, wow, it's really slow going up, which makes sense. But if you actually hold forward, even though you continue to push the wheels, you don't go any faster. Now, if you want to, you can explore down here. These are just some other areas of the Creo facility that you can't actually check out just yet. But you can see right here, become more than a man. Saving tomorrow, today. Creo, they're doing a lot of things. Obviously, the world has gone to heck in a handbasket, if you will, due to war and environmental collapse. And Creo is here to save it. We're a new employee here, and you can kind of already tell why Warren wants to work here but before we do that let's go and see if we can actually get any dialogue from the guards hey, sorry uh, I'm new around here so where should I go new huh job registration is over there sure so he didn't actually point anywhere but the registration is right down here but judging by that sign up there on that TV screen and the fact they're in a wheelchair I believe that Warren's reason for wanting to join resolve is very clear he wants to walk again and knowing full well that once we work here, we're going to get one of these, an exosuit, it makes sense that he would want to join this company. More than just a job, a home, a friend, and everything you will ever need. Maybe there's more to his backstory than first meets the eye, and perhaps we'll uncover that as we go. Please choose from our two currently available positions and form an orderly queue. You will receive your personal work gear voucher after registration. The job positions are sort of like your classes, but understand this, there really is no class in the Surge. In fact, you can change your build, your loadout, and your quote-unquote class at any time. It is all gear-based. So whether you start with the Rhino, which is more of a heavy armor, or you start with the Lynx, which is more of your light dex armor, it doesn't matter because you can very quickly choose. In fact, in the very first area, you can farm all of the Lynx armor and you can farm all of the Rhino armor. Although I will say the Rhino armor is more difficult to farm because there's only two enemies in the entire area that have it and only one of them respawns. So it's a little bit slower, but it can be done. I am going to go for the Lynx armor just because it's easier to get a full set of armor that way. And in this game, armor bonuses, set bonuses, are a thing. So if you're wearing an entire set that is head, chest, two legs, and two legs of any particular armor set, you'll get a bonus. With the Lynx, you get increased attack speed when you're at full health. With the Rhino, it's increased impact. But there's also some other caveats with that, so we'll have to take a look as we get it. So like I said, I'm going to start with the Lynx. Let's head on in. And then we'll start our adventure. If you like living life in the fast lane, Creo provides you with the highway to success as a field technician. Light, versatile, state of the art. Gear up and save tomorrow today. Rig installation program running. Program complete. Patient sedated. Initiating surgery.
Implanting neural link. How's that for an opening? Make anyone's skin crawl? Right away, we are just dropped into the world of the Surge, and something has clearly gone horribly wrong. Look at all of the corpses around here, the scraps of the old exosuits. And when we actually awoke, we had just seen the message that the energy core power was defective and we were being disposed of. Basically, that just means our battery is dead. In fact, we're going to get one relatively soon, and then we're going to be as good as new. And we still clearly have some juice in order to get up and walk around. But what's absolutely absurd is that whatever happened at this facility, even something as much as a dead battery, is considered defective and not worthy of being repaired or salvaging. So we were dragged out by this drone, and it is time to find out what happened to Creo. So right away, we are going to heal. We do have an implant that allows us to heal, and we're going to talk about implants once we get to the med station. But using B will heal. You can see I do have a limited number of charges up in the top left. I only have two remaining. And now we begin to learn our combat. We can see here, right bumper is horizontal, right trigger is vertical. This is kind of like your light and heavy attacks, although they really aren't light and heavy attacks. They are simply different ways of swinging your weapon. Every weapon class is going to have a unique set of combinations, and you're going to have to learn those because there are a number of them. So with this pipe, which is considered a one-handed weapon, here's my R1, R1, R1. Here's R2, R2, R2. You can see a really nice heavy slam. Here's R1, R1, R2. Similar to the R2, R2, R2. Let's do R2, R2, R1. The other thing you can do is you can charge it. So if you hold in either of those, you do get the power attack. But play around with the different weapons because there are a lot of combinations. The other thing to think of is there's actually timing on some of your attacks. So you can't just spam, spam, spam. It's actually much better if you plan your attacks. Instead, attack again only when you're at the end of one swing. Certain weapons will have unique combinations based on that. And of course, that is just telling us that there is a stamina management system, which you can see is that bottom bar under the red bar, which is my health. That is going to be consumed, obviously, when we attack, when we dodge, if we sprint, if we jump, but also even just blocking, which we're going to get a tutorial in just a moment on how to block. By the way, let me get this, because there are two drones here. See, that would have been a good time for me to actually use my my vertical attack, because he was above me. But when we go to block, it is actually going to lock us in place. We cannot move around, and it will slowly drain our stamina. So, I am stuck. I cannot move. But what I can do is, I can block attacks, obviously, but I can also jump. Or duck now if you time the block jump or duck appropriately right before you get hit you will open up a counter attack to do bonus damage to the enemy I'm gonna be completely honest with you this and this are borderline useless in my opinion I have not once been able to pull that off so if you can please let me know because obviously I'm doing something wrong but blocking is effective you can see the drone actually rebounded off. I got a little bit of a unique move there, and I was able to kill him. Well, it's still two hits, but I did do some bonus damage. Up and to the left, we have a couple of drones and an item, and we have the med station, but we are actually going to take a detour. You can see it says stay away. If you see that graffiti somewhere, that means something dangerous does lurk on the other side, and this area absolutely does. It's only three drones, but two of them 
Come on. Two of them, the darker color ones, those will actually shoot at you. Whereas this one is just a concussion drone, so he's going to attempt to melee you. I'm trying to drag him back into the tunnel with me. It looks like he got it. There we go. And you can see they have a lot more health. I will just reset. And there we go. Perfect. 35 damage. Excellent. By the way, the way that I'm switching targets is simply by tapping the left trigger. Take a look at your options because there are quite a few as far as controls go. In fact, we'll take a quick look here. Some of the things that I have changed. Body part names I have off. Body part highlighting I have off. I do have the hit light, so if I'm hitting it, it'll actually show you which uh, body part I'm striking, as well as the targeting UI. But what I don't have is uh, combat hit slowdowns. I don't have that. The finishing sequence rate I have set to low, which means I'll only get the cinematic, which you'll see in a little bit, when I get a new piece of gear or a new weapon. The other one that I do recommend is having sticky limb locking turned on. Now, as it says over in the tooltip, if you disable it, it can give you more flexibility, but staying locked onto the limbs require you to hold the right analog stick. I tried doing this because I like the idea of combat flexibility, but as you're gonna see soon, being able to just keep the reticle on a particular body part and then switching enemies just with the left trigger is going to be ideal. Now, if there are multiple enemies, you know, more than two, Holding the left trigger will allow you to quickly search between the different targets in front of you using the right analog stick. But now, we have to worry about these two drones. And like I said, they are going to shoot at us. So if I can get them to start shooting and then go down there, that would be ideal. Come on. Because these guys can do a lot of damage. We don't have to make it very far. We just have to get back to the med station. And it doesn't look like they're going to cooperate. So I tell you what, let's just get in here the other thing they're going to do though is this move right here if you see that it's not dangerous it won't hurt you but it does sap all of your stamina or your energy if you have any which we don't have any just yet because we don't have a working power core all right took a little bit of damage no big deal but now it's just this one we should be able to take him out relatively easily so we dash away anytime he starts charging that up so we always have stamina and you see there all my stamina is gone because of that that's all right so he is dead and the reason we came up here is because of this right here grabbing this item is going to give us six rig armature mark ones and six cortical processor mark ones that is going to be used for either creating or upgrading both of our chest armor and our head armor that we're going to get momentarily so definitely worth going to get that especially once you practice around with the combat it's not too difficult to get that all right, now we don't need to heal. We're just about done with this little section. And back up. Two quick hits, you're dead. All right. Now we get the medical audit implant. This is kind of intriguing, and I think it is going to bother some people, but this implant is going to allow us to see enemy health bars. If you've noticed, I don't know what the HP is of the enemies that I'm fighting. Once I put this implant in, it will show up above them. Without it, you won't see it. So we're at our very first med bay, but lo and behold, it is going to tell us fault detected because the power core is defective. And that's exactly why we were dragged out and left for dead. So we have to find an intact power core before we're able to utilize energy and before we're able to fully utilize our exosuit. What we can do though, is we can start looking at implants. You can see currently this rig has eight implant slots. Four are open, and the next one's open at 15, 25, 35, and 45. Down in the bottom, in that bar, you can see the core power consumption. Think of this like a highly modified equip load. All of your armor, all of your implants, require some level of core power in order to function. So you cannot exceed the maximum of 10, but currently I only have three. Right here, the vital injections, this is my healing implant. This takes three core power. I don't have anything else on, so this is the only thing that's taking up my core power. If I go into implants, you do start with some, and these might be pre-order bonuses. This one is a proximity sensor, which actually locates items and secrets. As much as I wanna tell you to use it because it will help you to find a lot of hidden loot, the beeping, is so annoying. In fact, I'll put it on now because it is hot swappable. You can see that underneath the name proximity sensor, which means I can take this off or put this on in the field. So I'm gonna put this on, but once you hear it, <laughs> I promise 
you're not going to want to use it. And you're definitely not going to want me to use it. But what we also have is the mechanized counterweight version 0.9. When this is activated, and it does require some energy, we'll talk more about energy momentarily, but it will increase my crush, slash, and thrust damage by five. More on that in a little bit. So I'll throw that on. And then also, I want the medical audit. Again, hot swappable, can put this on or take this off in the field, but this will allow me to see all of the enemy's HP. Now, I do think that the story of this game is really interesting, and as such, I am going to be talking to NPCs, watching cutscenes, stopping to watch televisions. So at any given time, if you want to skip those, just jump ahead just a little bit, maybe a minute or two, in the timeline of the video to skip it. But I am actually really intrigued by the story of Creo. So let us talk to our friend, we don't know her name yet, but, well, her name is Sally. Your rig has been damaged. Its distress beacon has been triggered. You need to get back into the factory. Well, okay. I'll just stroll right on over to the factory then. I certainly don't recommend walking, but there should be a maglev station nearby. They're never far from ops. The rig seems to work for me. Honestly, it's the least of my problems. I mean, I can walk. Huh. Never thought I'd be able to say that again. Well, that's good to hear, but the power core is damaged. You'll have to find a new one to make your rig fully functional. I don't know you. I'm surrounded by dead people here. Maybe someone would like to explain what's going on. I'm sorry, I don't know. You need to get inside. Maybe you can make something to protect yourself. Operations always has a gear assembly. On my way. Be careful. And don't forget to replace the power core of your rig or you're not going to get very far. I really like that Warren says, hey, I can walk. That's good enough for me, but if we do want to make it anywhere in this world, we are going to have to get an intact power core. And as we step outside, I love this right here. We get to watch this robot fly on by. It seems like maybe they even notice us, but for now at least he is okay just flying on by. I read some interviews with the actual developer, Deck13, and they said that that was going to function kind of like the Pursuer does in Dark Souls 2 and pop up periodically, but they ended up scrapping the idea because trying to constantly have an area big enough to fight him in and have the scripted events pop in at the right time just proved to be a little bit too much. Now right here is an exolift. We can't use it just yet. Oh, but oh, there's a proximity sensor. See that item? It's like a terrible game of hot or cold. Yeah, that's it. So go ahead and grab that. It's a new implant, the Ingression Amplifier. Now, I'm actually going to take that off right now because, like I said, I don't want it. The Aggression Amplifier is going to give us 10% health restored whenever we perform a finishing move. This is actually a great implant to have because you'll be doing a lot of finishing moves if you want to keep your items upgraded and create new gear from schematics. So what we could do is we could go throw it on now, but we can't even do finishing moves, so it won't do us any good. From here, we have a number of ways we could go. I am going to go just the main route for now because, well, we don't have a power core, so we are limited. But this is when we start to get into some of the more complex targeting mechanics. You can see here, it wants us to target the enemy's unarmored head, and that's because we don't have enough power in our exosuit to do damage to anything that's armored. You can tell if it's armored based on this orange shield icon. That's armored, his legs are armored, his legs are armored, his chest is armored, and both arms are. His head, however, based on this blue circle, is not. So if you see here, I try to target his arm, I do no damage. In fact, I just go right off. But if I go to the head, I do plenty of damage. There we go, he's dead. Now, tucked inside of the storage container, we do get yet another implant. This is the Vital Boost. I will be looking at these as we pick them up, just so you have an idea of what each one does. This one is going to give us an extra plus 10 health. <laughs> this is where... <sighs> this game is going to set itself apart, either in a good way or a bad way, depending on how well you take it. You have 100 HP. If you don't use any implants that increase your health, you will remain at 100 HP for the remainder of the game. That's it. 
Every time you level, you don't get health or stamina or energy. All you do is get more core power. So therefore, you can equip heavier armor or better armor, or you can use implants that have a higher core power requirement. It's a hard trade-off, and there's a lot of tough decisions to be made later on. Now, you can see that they're glowing for us right now. Because that's turned off, you won't see that apart from this tutorial. But I'm going to focus on his arm. And he almost got a hit there. Now, you can see here I can block. But again, I don't have the power to actually get him stunned. All right, he did get a hit in there. No big deal. If I had core power, I would have actually been able to deflect that attack. Now, there's an audio log here. I'm going to grab that and listen to it while I attack the next two enemies. Darn it. Why don't you listen? You need to upgrade your power core or replace it. Otherwise, you ain't getting through that door. If you keep trying to overload it without the proper power capacity, security is going to end up all over your butt. We've come too far to get caught now. Those implants are worth thousands. This is our golden ticket out of here, man. Don't screw it up. We have a couple of guys talking about smuggling out implants. Interesting. Now, we just got a pile of material scrap. We can use those as a consumable to give us additional tech scraps. By the way, tech scraps are used like your XP and your currency, as well as a necessity for upgrading your equipment. So every kill we get, we get some. Every consumable we use, we can get some. As well as there's a modifier to get additional tech scraps, but we don't see that yet until we get the core power, which we're going to get right here. Now, this guy has a lot more health than the other guy, so we have to be a little bit more careful. Not to mention, he does have higher stability, so he has an easier time breaking out of our attack chains. But there we go. With him dead, he drops the Atlas Power Core. All we need to do is head back to the med bay. We can throw this in, and then we can start doing some fun things, like executions. We can tear off limbs. We can use a terminal such as that, exolifts, all the wonderful things that are in store. Now, this game does have a lot of really good item descriptions, so I do challenge you to go through, read some of the armor pieces, the items, the cores, the weapons, to get a better idea of how Creo functions as a company. I'll be doing that for some of the more interesting bits, but please, go through and read it. Someone did take the time to write all those. Hidden item over here. Some more tech scrap, but now we can immediately head right back to the med station, put in our power core, and even get a level or two just perfect now med stations are going to function like our safe spots once we're in here Welcome we can't be attacked warrior. in fact if there are enemies on the outside this Hello, door won't even open but also they anytime you rest you. at the actual med bay everything's going to respawn and your tech scrap multiplier will be reset back to 1.0 so just something to keep in mind there's a very strong idea of risk reward in this game the longer you go without resting, the more tech scrap that you'll gain. But of course, if you die and you're somewhere 20 minutes away, that's going to be a long, arduous task to go back and get all of your scraps. So before I actually sit at the med bay, I'm actually going to go into my inventory and my consumables. Go ahead and use both of those. So now we're up to 1,870 scrap. And oh, I can't use that because I need to go ahead and sit first. Doing this, our health is replenished, our injectables are replenished, the fault is resolved, and now we have full access to upgrading. I'm going to go ahead and skip these. I'll explain them as we go. But we have 1,800 scrap. Takes 395 to level. I'm going to level... Yeah, I'll actually use it all. So we'll go ahead and level up to 14. Now we have 54 left. We can carry these with us, or if you're smart, you'll just go ahead and hold Y to bank that scrap. Now that scrap is safe. If we go out there in the field and die, this 54 scrap is going to remain here. I'm now also going to equip another implant. I'm going to use the health restored on finishing moves, the aggression amplifier. But this one is not bad if you're worried about taking damage. And then before we go back out in the field, we will be able to claim our gear, which is going to be two pieces of armor. So if we go to this machine, redeem our voucher. We get the schematic for both the leg and the arm of the Link's armor, but we also got one arm and one leg already. So if we take a look, now pay attention to my core power. Right now, I'm 4 out of 14. The arm takes 2 core power. 
throw that on, I'm now up to 6 out of 14. Likewise, the leg also takes 2, so now I'm at 8 out of 14. I only have 2 pieces, so I'm not getting any bonuses other than the defense that it provides, but we're going to rectify that next time. Now I'm going to keep these episodes somewhat shorter than you're probably used to because I would like to keep them coming at a regular rate, but hopefully this has been a good introduction for you to The Surge, a game that I do recommend, and honestly, the more I play it, the more I enjoy it. So next time we're going to continue on through the yard and we're going to start collecting new weapons. We're going to finish our entire Lynx armor set and we should be taking down our first boss and I'm going to show you how to get the upgraded version of the boss weapon. Because like in Lords of the Fallen, and I'm so glad this returned, meeting certain requirements when you kill a boss will get you the same item you normally would, but a better, more powerful version of it. Anyway, this has been The Surge. I hope you're all enjoying and I will see you next time.